morning, stranger. This is Ponderosa land. That makes you the stranger, doesn't it? No, oh, that's Cartwright land. Now, just who might you be? I'm Joe Cartwright. Riding out this way looking for strays. Well, you found one. I'm obliged to you for a bed down, a mess of beans, and the use of your coffee pot. Uh, you're welcome to it, if, uh, if that's all you're after. That's all I need. This here air, that there sun making a blue shadow mystery of what's over the next rise. Hey, that's a mighty fine piece of horse you got there. Thank you. Lean in the withers. Chest like a big stave oak barrel. I had one just like it. Till he, uh, gave up his life saving me in an old Comanche raid outside of Miss Tizo. Yeah, those fine folk uh, over there gave me this here old watch. For services rendered that day. That's a good looking watch. Man can't ride a watch. Where's your horse? Found it back a ways. Crowbait. Not like this one. Oh, I sure do miss that other fellow. One man horse. Nobody could ride him but me. Same with this one. Oh, I never seen a horse I couldn't ride. Yeah, well, you're looking at one now, mister. Let's see. Hey, wait a minute. This horse can make that ridge in 10 seconds flat from a standing start. Yeah, well, sure, he's fast enough. That watch of mine's got a second hand on it. Look, that's, that's my horse you're sitting on, mister. Oh, you're a fine-looking specimen. I trust you with my watch. And my rifle. All right, you're on. Get ready. Go! for you play pretty now bring it over now <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's it now that ain't social you running from me sit let me be i ain't such a much let me be you all i got play pretty now be nice and do what you got hired to do sit <laughs> I guess that pretty little girl already done what she gets paid for. Back off, mister. She's my play. I'm the original ringtail roar. More like a ringtail baboon, I'd say. Did he pay for that 40 rod? No. Now, ain't that forgetful? Now, give him his gun. He'll use it. Well, I guess a man has to make these life and death decisions every day. 
Now go on, give it to him. Now get out of here. obliged. What for? Man needs a bit of muscle stretching after a long day's ride in the saddle. I never had no men fighting over me before. Why not? Well, truly, I ain't such a much. No, that's a terrible thing to say about one of my friends, especially if she reminds me of Snowflower. Snowflower? Indian princess, daughter of Chief Thundercloud. I met her when I was scouting for General Crook. She made a fine bride. Till she got killed. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. She died proud and happy. Fighting alongside her daddy. My daddy wasn't no chief. He just fought being poor. Never had no shoes, even. Cut me a five-tote track to church every Sunday, I did. I bet you walked real proud. Just resentful. My old daddy had them dreams. We all got to have them dreams, gal. Never come true. Bought herself a piece of bottom land, and the river came and washed it away. Homestead some rich prairie. Drought come, and that old homestead just, just went. Guess he died reaching for a fistful of air. He had you. That was riches enough. <laughs> no, it didn't. I run away. Heading for San Francisco, I got as far as here and I went bust. And that's why you're working here. Working and waiting. My daddy won 500 in a poker game before some tin horn cashed him in for good. But it's coming here at the Virginia City Bank. Now, ain't that a rainbow wish come true? Yeah. Well, I got important business waiting. Going to be the end of my rainbow, too. That's nice. Are you all put together? You'll come back. Me too. All you gotta do is holler Baudry come a running. That's a nice looking horse you got there. It's tolerable. He'll do to the next one. Are you, uh, you plan to get the next one the same way you got this one? I don't follow you, friend. <laughs> you don't follow me, huh? <laughs> of course you don't. I follow you. Right down there to the sheriff's office. They'd hung you up years ago. Ben Cartwright, you are a sight for saddle sore eyeballs. You know him. Know him? Yes, we know each other. We uh, had some dealings here and there. Hey, Ben, the gospel, man. <laughs> you old tiger, you. You remember the time you were standing off a whole battalion of Santa Ana's best? Oh. <laughs> Just to kiss that slow eyed senior in a goodbye? <laughs> <laughs> long time ago, boy. Long time ago. Long, long road. Yeah. Say, which one was she now? Teresina or, or, or Margarita? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, this is a little bit of your past you ain't got around to tell us about, ain't it? Oh, Ben here never was much for talking. Just doing. And if this here young bull's your son, you did all right. Yeah. Uh, ask him about your other son. He came in riding Joe's horse. 
Nobody ever tell you? It ain't polite to interrupt when men are talking. Here's your gun, boy. Now, this here Tad's under the impression that uh, I stole that old hay burner. Yeah, I've been waiting for you to tell me how you came by him. Well, your son uh, told me his name. I saw your brand on, uh, on his horse. And I just couldn't resist having a little fun. So I boxed him. How'd you ride him? And better than that, how'd you get him away from little Joe? Yeah, I think I know how. You pulled that old watch trick on him, didn't you? Yes, sir, <laughs> I sure did. Just like Stephen Rhea did before he got himself hung. <laughs> ben, uh, what do you say we sweep from the hinges of our tonsils over the saloon? Oh, there's plenty of time for that once we get to oh, the Ponderosa. Come on, Ben. Oh, she'd take that wagon and uh, Candy, see if you can find little Joe, give him a ride home. Bo and I got a lot of talking to do. Come on. <laughs> Supper for some time yet. Could you use a sandwich? Well, I just might. Good. How many? One. Good. If you split the loaf down the long way. I sure did a terrible thing to you. What do you mean, a guest? Well, this is old Baudry. Come on. Come on, get up. Hey, well, well, old Baudry stole my horse. I've been walking for two and a half hours. I got blistered feet. Yes, I Not bad. <laughs> right in the button. Look, this is Baudry. This is the youngest, the pride and joy. Joseph, this is old Bo. Shake on, shake hands. How do you do? Yeah. <laughs> I heard that he uh, pulled the old watch trick on you. Yeah, it was real funny, real funny. <laughs> of course, I, uh... I threw in a bit of schooling in the bargain, seeing he was the son of my old compadre. Yeah, schooling? What do you mean, schooling? Well, now you know, never face down a stranger with both your hands so bizified, you're at the mercy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Get upstairs and soak your feet. Let me go get upstairs and soak my head. <laughs> Here, if you're watching, if you don't mind, I'll take my horse back. He's a good horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He, uh... He hits pretty good, Ben. Yeah? Yeah, he's, uh, he's all right. One of the best. What about you? You still hitting pretty good, too? Or are you still that yonder man looking for what's beyond that next rise? Nope. I'm going to settle down and build me a spread, like you did, Ben. You're not. You're not going to tie down. Why not? You did. Why not me? Oh, you'd find it too dull. Last time I heard you were drifting cattle across the Rio Grande to the Bandidos. Gorillas, Ben. One man's here is another man's traitor. Oh, I might have been on a few Texas one posters, all right. But south of that river, I was a real caballero. You ride up that cut to Miraflores, don't be surprised to find a big statue of Baudry gracing the town square. Ha! I'm going to tell you something, Baudry. Nothing about Baudry would ever surprise me. <laughs> I'm going to get those sandwiches. <laughs> Yes, senor. Howdy. There's water in the bucket. Step down. Take a drink. I think I will. Many 
tracks for such a lonely place, huh? Quite a few. Before I came, a man walked to this cabin. One road. Then one rides away, and the other one walks. But the man who walked away is not the one who walked here. You read track pretty good. Oh, something to do. You know. A man that interested in tracking is usually looking for somebody. Isn't somebody always looking for somebody? Well, there is a man I would like to see. He comes this way from Chris Montana. He's a big man. Stands tall, much hombre. Have you seen a man like this on the trail? The man you're looking for is, um, uh, is he on the run? From who? From you, maybe. From me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if he comes from the north and I come from the south, how could he be on the run from me? Hmm? It's a good question. You know, I think this friend of mine, uh, he went to Virginia City. I've never been there. I think I will go there myself. Fine. Would you close the door when you leave? Hey. You never took your drink of water. Decided I wasn't thirsty. <laughs> Adios. Hasta luego. Yes, sir, a hawk in the sky, a big horned goat, jumping from peak to peak like there was little clumps of clay. Yes, Ben, that was me. Oh, Ben, the world squeezing down like, like some little tad's leaking balloon. Every man's entitled to at least one crack at a big dream. You had yours and you made it work. Well, sweat made it work, Bo. That and the need to settle down. Sure. Ponderosa for you, and Miraflores for me. Mexico? No, I got the beginnings right here, Ben. I know $500 ain't much, but maybe it's enough for a down payment. You got the kind of bees I need, Ben. Now, I know under ordinary circumstances, it, it ain't much, but you and me, Ben. Yeah, well, uh... Baudry, you sure that's what you want? I changed, Ben. Believe me, I'm not asking to use you. I'm asking you to invest. Miraflores, huh? Mr. Curry, I went all the way out to the cabin. I didn't see any sign of Joe. Oh! <laughs> yeah, well, he, uh, he found his way here. <laughs> he walked all the way. He's upstairs soaking his feet right now. Just so you got here, all right. Yeah. Mr. Baudry, I ran into a man I think is looking for you. He's a Mexican, he's a big man, very dark, soft-spoken. Do you know him? No, 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 I don't, Caddy, no. Well, I, uh, I got some miles of fence to ride, I'll get to it. Fine, thank you, Candy. Yeah. So, Miraflores, huh? I'm not gonna let you jump, Ben. You think about it for a few days. Well, I don't see how I'm gonna be able to turn my back on you. Just the same. You think about it. Now, there's a certain little lady at the Silver Dollar that I think I'll have a few words with. All right? <laughs> hey, uh, you're not going to walk all the way to Virginia City. And there's a bay in the barn. Help yourself. Thank you, Ben. All right. Ah, my tonsils is clacking like castanets. <laughs> <laughs> Bien, bien. Bien. What are you doing up here? 
Well, I got your message, and I and thought you came I... a running to help me trail the bold reef herd back down. <laughs> oh, I, mean, you, I wish it were true. I really do wish it were true. Why? If you go back to Miraflores now, the orders are to kill you. What are you talking about? Kill me? Everything passes, hombre. Things change. What's changed? Cardona. Cardona? How? I stole that white horse he rides. But that's in the past. We were heroes, yes. But now Cardona sits fat in a white suit in the palace of the gobernador. And he wants no part of the old past. And what about the rest of them? The ones who put him there? But you've got to understand, man. You win the throne of the gobernador. And power makes enemies out of old friends. Cabeza de Vaca is dead. Cholo's on the run, still in the revolutionary profession. And do you know who he has to fight? Cardona. And you, Mitar? Oh, man gets old. He has to go where the grub is. Adios, viejo. Podre, amigo. I run the rurales for Cardona now. End of a dream. Don't make it into a nightmare. In the name of the old past, don't make me responsible for your hanging. Original Lone Wolf from Bitter Creek, and it's my night to howl. <laughs> Maybe you had enough. I sure have, up to here. Hey, ain't there no action in this here town? Oh, you sure are ready to fight the bear. Yeah. It don't it show, eh? Where the wild grizzly screams with scare when I crawl into his den. <laughs> Tom, you settle down. Yeah. Yeah. Here are Flores. Now, oh, there's the place. Yeah, you got me a war bag full of dreams. Swing it on it. Wild running deer. Cold stream full of trout. Green grass so tender a man could eat. You been there? No. But I've been in all them saloons trying to get my daddy out before somebody really believed he was the original wild man from Bodie. Man's world. You need somebody to protect you. You've done that already. I want a bottle. Not from you. Her. Look, I don't want trouble. Then you tell her to serve me. The trouble is, old Ben won't give me no breeding cattle if there ain't no mere flores. You earned your pay, play pretty. I don't hear a thing. But I sure do smell something awful bad. Okay.
that gun away. You started, Sheriff. Oh, that's a lie. I don't care who started it. It stops now, do you understand? You boys are lazy white hands, ain't you? Yeah, all but him. Three of them. And he was doing fine until the roof fell on him. Well, you're going to be late getting back. Because you're going to jail for a spell. Him too? Him too. Come on, let's pick him up and go. Get them all out of here, Sheriff. Get them out Come of on, here. Come on, boys, move. Rosie, from there. I can guess why I'm in this here Iron Hotel. What are you doing here? Sheriff let me in. After the lazy wife foreman paid damages to get his hands loose. How you feel, Bo? <laughs> oh. Oh, uh. How long have I been out? This ain't no place for the likes of you. That same thought just come to me, too. It's like caging a big old eagle. What's that? Five hundred dollars. I got my inheritance. You'll probably have to pay something to get out of here. <laughs> That's your getaway money, gal. If I take that, what do you, how are you going to make San Francisco? I'm a yonder man, Noreen. The way I move. I might not be coming back for some time. Please, take my money. That won't be necessary. No, sir, not while I got my own 500. Oh, you're going to need that 500 to pay me for those beeves I'm selling you. Well, what about the damages? The Lazy R's ramrod said that his men admitted they were in the wrong, so uh, they're going to stand the damages. You're in the clear. Get your hat. Well, what about her? Oh, stagecoach leaves in two days. I got my job till then. You ain't got the talent for that kind of job, Noreen. Ben, she's a milksop calf. A bow, natural born target for every hog leg buster in the territory. Well, Noreen, uh, you can come out to the ranch and stay there till you're ready to leave for San Francisco if you want to. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! <laughs> All the land we rode over, up there, to the mountains and beyond, Ponderosa land. Yes, sir, old Ben Cartwright sure did build his other spread. Better don't hold a candle to Miraflores. Oh, Miraflores ain't such a much. It will be once you take hold. Ain't nothing you can't do, Baudry. I've been thinking a man gets to settle down, he's gonna want a woman to back him up. There are plenty of those pretty little chiquitas below the border just waiting to be lassoed. But you throw a long loop, too. I never did build me no reputation being a one-woman man. Wouldn't make no difference to me. Well, settle down roosters got astray a bit, but they always come back to the home roost. My, my. It's a lot of known coming from spring chicken. It ain't how long you lived. It's what you done with the living you used up. Well, when you get to San Francisco... Well, I ain't got no reason to go to San Francisco. Got me a reason to go someplace else. Where? Near Flores with you. It's getting late, Noreen. It's never too late to buy into a dream, Baldry. I got that $500 and it's yours for the asking. I don't want to go out alone no more. Please take me with you. You don't know what you'd be letting yourself in for. I don't care. Because I know I... I wash out pale against all them hot-eyed senoritas. 
Serene. Right now, they don't hold a candle to you. He looked me straight in the eye and said he didn't know this Charo. Next thing I know, he's fallen all over him. Well, maybe it was a mistake. No, I don't think it was a mistake. What about this friend of his that he didn't know so well? Huh? He's uh, Mexican, mid-40s, uh, dark, soft-spoken man. Do you have anything on him in the posters? Well, not that I remember, but let's take a look. All right. Howdy. Roy Coffey's my name. Deputy Stryker. Glad to know you. What can we do for you? Hey, you've come a long way. I've made shorter rides. Uh, this is Mr. Kennedy. We all call him Candy. Candy. Hi. This man's from Crease, Montana. Crease? I'd say you were looking for a man named Baudry. That's the name on the warrant. I had a man named Baudry locked up in jail here for busting up three cowboys in a saloon all by himself. Now, could that have been him? That's Baudry. Which way do you go? He's uh, at the Ponderosa Ranch. I'll show you. No, I don't want to put you out, none. No trouble. Come on. Well, you got faith in him. You believe in him, you're giving him a stake. Oh, well, that's different. I... See, there was a time on the Pendant Alice when I was as good as dead. And, and he saved your life? You know, 50 beeves is little enough to pay for something like that, isn't it? Ain't that something? Willing to sacrifice himself for you. Oh, I... I don't know about that. I was never really sure. Maybe it was because he was one against 12 bloodthirsty Comancheros. Maybe that was challenge enough. So was Miraflores. So was San Francisco. For you. I ain't got no reason to go there now, Mr. Cartwright. I never had nothing all my life. And now I got him. I'm heading out with Baudry. Well. Well, well, well. Did he, uh... Did he ask you to, to go along with him? Good as. Miraflores. Rough country. It's a whole lot different from what you've been used to. Oh, I don't care about that. All I care about is him. Why are you telling me? You're his friend. I, I, I thought... I was hoping you'd be happy for him. For, for both of us. Of course. Of course. Well, I better go back. Won't do to keep Baldry waiting.
Tracker! You old polecat, you! <laughs> I said it was an idea, boy. I didn't say it was a good one. <laughs> How are you? Good. Yeah, pure porcupine, that boy. Fills out all the time. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of you when you were young, Mo. And that there is a compliment. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, uh, somebody hung it too bad, didn't you? Yeah, I'm uh, deputing out of crease these days. Fact is, I'm here on business. I reckon you know what it is. Listen, you'd never believe who's uh, who's running this spread, you know. Ben Cartwright. Oh, Ben? Yeah. Why, well, I haven't seen him since he took the salute after the battle of Cerro Busco. <laughs> <laughs> and uprides this lad to the camp cook. Now he's got scare oozing out of every pore. He says, the line's broke. Run for your life, lady. The banditos are coming. <laughs> yeah, well, she just hauls off and whacks him clean out of that saddle with a big old fry pan. <laughs> now, she said, you got a choice to make here, boy. You can either get killed by them or by me. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you hear that story? <laughs> that was me she hit with her fry pan. <laughs> <laughs> you said you had some business to discuss, Striker. Bo? Ain't you never gonna learn? You're, uh, you're not talking about Chris Thorson, are you? He give you a job on those steers in the crease. And I delivered him like he said. And you run off with Thorson's 500. Well, I just figured it for a loan. You didn't tell him. Why, I blew more than that in one night having a bus with Chris. That time we came down from the Canadian with all them belts. More than a thousand dollars in one night. Times change, man. Fun's fun, but this is business. Tell you what, Bo, you give me the money. I'm sure he'll be willing to forget the old thing for old time's sake. And if I don't? Then I'll have to bring you back to Crease and make you stand trial for cattle thieving. You better give him back that money. I was going to give it back as soon as I got set up in Mira Flores with all those cattle you were running. Deal is off. Give it back. Ben! Give it back. Better make your peace, Baldry. Ain't no running room left these days. I helped you tame a few towns, Stryker. Hey, come to this. Those were the old times. The good times. Now all I got is a war bag full of memories. And this here badge. And just a job keeping it. Seventy-five a month and found. Working for the storekeepers as runs the towns. I'll see you, Ben. I need those cattle, Ben. I can still make it below the border. After all we've been through. I ain't asking for charity, Ben. He don't need it. Baldry. I got $500. Now, you can count it if you want to, but I want to buy a piece of Miraflores, too. Looks like the deal's still on, Ben. Busted the mold. <laughs> well, that is fifty heads worth. What are you doing here? Come on, I'm 
bring it out. Tell Mr. Carver. He forced me from Padre. He was going to take me to the sheriff. My brother badge means nothing here. You know that. I can cause no incident. This is the man Padre said he didn't know. He has something to say I think you ought to hear. It's matter. Mm. Matter. You remember me, senor? Yes. Ramira Flores. Of course I do. Of course I do. What are you doing up here? I came to, to warn Padre. Warn him about what? Tell him. Well, Padre's got a price on his head in Miraflores. If he goes back down there, they'll kill him. He's my friend. I, I had to warn him. Well, well, well. Well, leave that part. How long have you known, huh? You lied about Mary Forrest. Who'd I hurt, Ben? You? No, not me. Maybe Noreen. What about her? I need her. She's gonna help me settle down. You settle down? You're gonna be on the run for the rest of your life. Striker squared things in Montana? What have I got to run from? I'll tell you what you got to run from. Yourself. I need them bees, Ben. A deal's a deal. You got no choice. You have a choice. Them beeves or that girl. Well, they don't mean nothing without that girl left to believe in me. I need her, Ben. Now, what do you do when you've run through her money? And when you've used her up? How's she gonna feed on those glory tales of yours when you leave her behind to go off yandering again? I won't leave her! Well, you can tell her that. Maybe she'll believe you, but I don't. Audrey, you're a liar. Fall! <laughs> Get up on your feet. Call me a liar. Oh, no, stop it. Don't. Get out of my way. You're still faster with your fists than with your head, aren't you? Well? I got things to do and places to go, and I aim to be free, and I got no need for nobody. Do you think he'll ever settle down? I don't know. Hope so. By the way, the Perrys will be waiting for you when you get to San Francisco. They're nice, quiet folks, and they'll see that you get the right start. Thank you. Bye-bye. spoil the goodbyes. But I want to say goodbye to you, Ben. Those bees are in the northwest pasture. You better take them along with you. Oh, Ben. 
Not for old times' sake. But the fights we once had, and the one we didn't have. All right, man. What about you? You going with him? Si, senor. A man has to have a compadre along. Someone he understands. Swap lies with. <laughs> Adios. 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 How much of poetry is a lie and how much of them is really the truth? I don't think even Baudry could answer that. Pray that the souls of the departed may ascend unto the glory of God. And with this consecrated earth, Charles Ball, I give you to your maker. And may you rest in peace through all eternity. Get on with it. Mr. District Attorney, could you uh, perhaps make a statement now? Yes. How will this affect the case? It's a setback. It'll mean a delay, but that's all. Sooner or later, I mean to bring these scoundrels to justice. In addition to their other crimes, I'm going to see the answer to this. Could I say that this has been a deliberate and brutal murder? You may say that the man we're burying here today, Charles Ball, was brutally murdered to prevent his testimony. It's good to see you. Have your horse lose a shoe or something? I'm sorry to bother you like this, Ben. That's all right. Um, who else is here? A horse and little Joe. Candy, you know. Well, I know they're reliable. What's all this about, Ben? I'm going to ask you a favor. And I'm going to ask it both as an old friend and in my official capacity as United States Marshal. Well, let's get on with it. Ask him. Ben. Go ahead. This is Charles Ball. Mr. Ball, didn't I hear that you've been murdered and buried? Just never shook sure hands with a corpse before. to hide him for a couple of days. Uh, Byrne? We got a... Well, we got plenty of room here. We could put both of you up. Well, I wouldn't be staying, Ben. See, we put out the story a couple of days ago that he was killed. I, uh... I've got to get back. It wouldn't look right. But that'll give you the responsibility of guarding him. Uh, guard him against whom? Anybody. Everybody. Popular fella? Joe. 
You better go outside and see if the marshal's men need anything. All right. Vern? I have a few more details about this case that Mr. Ball is involved in. Well, the, uh, the case involves uh, defrauding the government and misuse of government land. And murder, don't forget that. It's all right, Charles. It isn't poison. All came from the same pot. You see, they've uh, already tried to kill him twice. After the first attempt, we put him in the security of the prison at Carson City. And the day before yesterday, one of the guards, a man with 15 years' service, shot him twice. Money talks. To some people. So you see, Ben, I do need your help. But I, uh, I wouldn't blame you if you turned me down. Well, Ben, I said I'd help you. I'll help you. Thanks. I'd like you to take a letter to my wife. Well, it's out of the question. No one's supposed to know you're here. I'm not going to tell her where I am, just that I'm still alive. That's all. I promise. No, I can't take the chance. Harriet's been through enough. I can't let her go on thinking I'm dead. Why, it's only until we get you to the grand jury next week. Marshal, either I write that letter, or you're going to have to go back to the grand jury and tell them that I can't give one word of testimony. That'll blow the case right out the window. All right. But I want to read it when you're done. Use my desk there, Billy. It does make a difference who holds the cards. Doesn't it? Tell him. you hired to kill Ball must have missed. Only thing in that coffin was a log. So Ball is still alive. I want the men on every road going out of Carson City. Have them nose around the towns, the cafes, even the doctors. Have somebody check the stage depots, the railroads, telegraph offices. And put Haley and a couple of others to watching Mr. Ball's wife. Yes, sir. Rogers. You better find Mr. Ball. Thing in it. I think you're making a big thing out of nothing. Stairs moved? Huh? Yeah, we got it moved. Oh. Look who's 
the discussion about? Uh, Candy here thinks we made a mistake. Yeah, he thinks we bought gun trouble by bringing in Mr. Ball. He doesn't like taking the extra risk. Well, that's not the way I said it, but that's what I meant. You don't think we ought to give Mr. Ball protection, huh? No, I don't. I think he's a thief. Well, that, uh, that really isn't the point, is it? The point is that the marshal asked us to give him protection. And Mr. Ball is going to give testimony so that bigger thieves will be put behind bars where they belong. Are you against putting crooks in jail? No, I'm not. You think the other crooks are going to hold still for it? They tried to get him while he was in jail. They shot him. They're going to try to get him here. Now, if I didn't know you better, I'd... Uh... Say you were scared. Yeah, I'm scared. That's right. You bet on it. I'm scared five or six of them are going to come. And there's going to be one or two of you here. And the rest of us are going to be out in the rain somewhere. And we'll get back just in time to bury you. That's what I'm scared of. Joe, have you seen my danger? No, I didn't, Bob. Isn't it in the drawer there? Uh, it's not in the desk. It's not here. Ball's got it. What made you say that? Well, you remember he sat at the desk when he uh, wrote that letter to his wife. He must have taken it then. He might be right. I'll see if he's got it. Now, wait a minute, Joe. Joe. Let him keep it. What do you mean, let him keep it? He's a distraught, frightened man. Let him keep it. All right, he's distraught and he's frightened. What good's the Derringer gonna do him? Probably no good at all, but at least it might give him a little confidence, which I think he needs right now. And suppose he decides to use it on us. He won't, Joseph. We're the only people who can keep him alive. Candy, I got Luke keeping watch on the hill so he can watch both ways. Spell him right now, with you? Okay. You're sure you want him to keep the gun, huh? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Just don't turn your back on him. There. How's that? Fine. You've been very kind. Don't mention it. You, uh... You've been hitting that stuff pretty hard. I can't stand the shaking. This helps. You might try some sunshine. It's a nice day outside. Why don't you come out and get some fresh air? We'll see. Haas? Yeah? Do you mind if I ask you something? No. Why'd you take me in? Well, you, you had to stay someplace. It's not as simple as that, and you know it. Well, it... It had to be done. That's all there is to it, Mr. Ball. Decided to come down. I haven't wanted to impose, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, there's no one position. Oh, I'm on my way. All right, Hoss, we'll see you later. Where's he going? He's going outside to relieve Candy. We're keeping watch on the road in. I see. Do you mind if I go outside? Of course not. Go right ahead. It's perfectly safe. Unfortunately, I've heard that before. Now, we searched the place thoroughly. There's no one around. Yeah, where were we were now. Oh, yes. Extra payroll. Howdy. 
didn't mean to spook you. Do you always sneak around like that? I don't sneak. I just walk soft. It's a habit I found very useful. You're the one didn't want me here the other night. I never said that. You didn't have to. Trouble dumped in your lap, nothing in it for you. That's about it. If it had been up to me, I'd uh, probably just said, sorry, full up. But it wasn't my say, it was Mr. Cartwright's. The Cartwrights. They seem like nice people. They are. What's their angle? Oh, I mean, for taking me in. There isn't any. Come on, everybody's got his price. Not them, for a fact. Sticking their necks on the block? They must think they're going to get something out of it. Well, you think about it real hard. Maybe the right answer will come to you. Depends on how sharp you are. Try picking cotton for a change. Should try playing checkers for a change. Hello, nightcap. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stare. I was just thinking, you look like a happy man. Too much thought, but I uh, suppose I am. Came out of the same bottle as this. You see, the first time they used strychnine. You know, you're uh, offering to uh, give testimony. That takes a lot of guts. No, I'm just trying to get a lighter prison term by pleading the state's evidence. Not the same. Uh, do a lot of good. You're being used, you know that? This is a very dirty fight. The eight men that will be convicted by my testimony go all the way to the top of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And if they're not convicted, and there's a very good chance they might not be, they'll kill you. The Marshal forgot to tell you that. He was afraid of scaring you off. Well, I have a feeling that my boys would have insisted that... Uh... We take you in anyway. You'll be safe here. I'm beginning to believe it. I think for the first time in a long time, I'll sleep through the night. Give me a chance, I'll find her! Please don't tell her! Please, you kill him! I'm pretty, pretty. That's enough. He's up with a hundred foot of her all day long. Let her get away from him. You'll be more careful the next time. Telegraph Artiman. Tell him we've located Ball somewhere in the area of Virginia City. Doctor Hip. Nerve pacifier. Never heard of it. I'll see if I can find a Bible for you. Only if you can get it without any trouble. I'll be careful. Yeah. Oh, um, if I do slip up and uh, there's somebody in town, 
You've always got that gun to fall back on. They know you've got it. If you wanted one, all you had to do was ask. I didn't know that then. You got their angle figured out yet? It's one of two things. Either they're rich enough so they don't have to worry about being practical, or they've got an arrangement with the marshal. You know, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. <laughs> Keep trying. She came over the hill. She almost slipped past me. I'll be here in about five minutes. Mr. Ball, you better get inside the house. She won't come this way. Woman is my wife. Your wife? Yeah, she's here. I sent for her. What do you mean you sent for her? How? The letter I gave Ludlow had a coded message, a code my wife and I agreed a long time ago. Twenty-seven people in the town since morning. A couple of families, some ranchers. I got men covering the general stores, both banks, and the saloons. What about the doctors? The telegraph office? Mm, them too. Nothing so far. We're spread a little thin, but uh, I don't think we'd miss anything important. Cowboy just come in driving a buckboard with a bay team. I'll take a look. Give me a beer. How are you? I'll get back on the watch. Yeah. I'll take care of a horse. Miss Ball, I'm Ben Cartwright. We'd better get inside the house, come you find your husband? Oh, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. If you found him, so could somebody else. I told you I used a code. Now you just be quiet. How did you find your husband? It was a code. We arranged it a long time ago. I just wanted to verify that. That was very foolish, Mr. Ball. She wasn't following. You lied to the Marshal. You promised Marshal Ludlow no information, just that you're alive and well. All right, I went back on my word, but she's here now, and that's all that's important. Paul, you think I'll ride in and tell the marshal? They'll send me away again, right? Mr. Cartwright, please. Since this happened four months ago, I don't think Charles and I have had 15 minutes together. I haven't made up my mind yet. the harm is to cut right. She won't tell anybody. So stay out of sight, like me. Are you sure you weren't followed? I haven't had very much experience at this sort of thing. That's right, you haven't. But I know there are some places where a man can't very well follow a woman. So I slipped out the back of a dressmaker's in Virginia City yesterday, and I doubled back to the state line. I spent the night at a little boarding house and I rented a different horse to come up here on. I, I kept off the main roads. This is all above board, Mr. Cartwright. I promise you. Why don't you go upstairs? You probably want to freshen up before you eat. <laughs> then I can stay. For the time being. Thank you. I do appreciate this, Mr. Cartwright. I want to take a look at that arm. Always oh, coming. Fine. Right. I had to see you. I know. I missed you so much.
Harry, I must tell you, I made a deal with some of the boys. Charles, let me take a look at that wound, and uh, then we'll talk about it. supplies and a bottle of medicine. Are you sure? I bet I'm sure. After that, he went to the doctors and got three rolls of bandages. I think we've located Mr. Ball. Uh, the cowboy won't be easy to follow. What do you mean? Didn't you get the brand on the horse? Yeah. And don't try to follow him. Go to the courthouse and look at the brand book. Rogers, get Haley and the rest of the men together. Tell them we're going to ride. Right. What are you so worried about? It's good news. Fifty thousand dollars. You won't mind that, will you? What will it cost you? It'll mean a new life for us. It won't mean a new life unless you change. Isn't it a little late for that? Charles, I've gone along because that's what a wife should do. But I don't always like it. What is your deal? When I testify, I clear the names of seven of the defendants and place the entire blame on one of them. And that one? Bardman. He deserves hanging anyhow. Did you make this agreement before the guard tried to kill you or afterwards? Before, so it must have been Vardman. Why Vardman? If the others double-crossed him, why not you? If you get killed, they save $50,000. If I don't accept the offer, they will have me killed. They promised me that. And if you do accept the offer of the Seven, Vardman will kill you one way or another. They are savages, chewing each other up. They're cannibals. Harriet, any one of them, or all eight of them, will kill me if possible. If I stay alive to testify, I stand a very good chance of earning $50,000 in gold. And the money means that much to you? Yes. I want you alive. Don't you understand that? I want you alive. And nothing else matters to me. I'll stay alive. And I'll get the money. You'll see. On guard? Yeah. Hail over Dry Creek. Oh, hey. Hey! I got your medicine. Do you need this? Do you have any trouble getting it? Not much. Did anybody see you get it? Well, sure, I had to buy it, didn't I? I mean, any strangers. Did any stranger take a particular interest in it? No strangers, none. No one followed me out of town. <laughs> well, I'm gonna relieve us. Fine, all right. Yeah, let me help. Ponderosa. All right, you men, get out of sight. All right, let's scatter. Ready? The 
Anything I can do for you, mister? Just riding through, looking for some likely land to homestead. You can't homestead this property. Why not? This Ponderosa Ranch belongs to Ben Cartwright. Does it? How do you know that? I'm his son, Joe Cartwright. Well, I'm glad to know you, Joe Cartwright. Now, if you don't mind, just drop your gun to the ground. What's that, some kind of a joke? Just look behind you on either side. Go on from here. Alone? They have no reason to do anything to me. We'll try the easy way first. All right, I'll spot the men all around. Lamb, Frank. Paul, oh, I need to talk to you a minute. What's going on? Oh, nothing. I just need to talk to Paul. Are the riders coming this way? Are they? Yes, sir, they are. Anyone you know? Never saw them before. What did they look like? Well, one of them sort of dressed up a dude. They're after me, I know it. Well, those that are with him are gunmen. How many? Six. Mr. Ball, take your wife upstairs. Keep out of sight and keep quiet. Harriet. What? Go out the back way. Stay around. Candy? Let's you and I get real comfortable. It is, Varden. Charles, he couldn't know about the other seven. The 50,000. It may be that he has an offer. Not Vardman. He came in to kill me. Mr. Cartwright? Yes. I'm Richard Varnaby. Oh, yes, Mr. Varnaby. Of course, I've read about you in the financial pages. Mining, isn't it? Yes, uh, mostly. Uh, what can I do for you? I'm looking for Charles Ball. Charles Ball? I'm afraid I can't help you. so sure about that. I think you can help me. Uh, Candy, did you take your medicine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The medicine. <clears throat> May I talk to you privately? Well, you can speak freely, Mr. Vardaman. I thought I might save you a little embarrassment. You see, I didn't come unprepared. I came with the power to bargain. <laughs> bargain for what? Your son, 
Oh, Mr. Ball. My son? Your son, Joseph. I'm holding him prisoner. Mr. Vardaman. My son has nothing to do with Mr. Ball. I suggest you release him immediately. I know that Ball is somewhere around Virginia City. Now, you don't strike me as a man afflicted with a case of nerves. And neither one of you look like you're in need of any bandages. So if Mr. Ball isn't here. I'm sure you'll know where he is. I have no idea where Mr. Ball is. I presume you want your son to remain alive. Alive and released. And you'll have to give me Ball. I can't give you anything I don't have. I'll give you some time to think about it. I'll give you ten minutes. Now you bring Ball to me up on the hill, or I'll bring your son to you, dead. Medicine and brought him out here. They saw me buy it and they followed me. I didn't fool him any trying to drink it. Waterman. Waterman has his Joe. Yeah, a little Joe. Because unless we give up Mr. Ball, he'll kill Joe. What did you tell him? See if there's a chance of getting the horses through the gully. Right. You're going out to leave us undefended? For a while, yes. Maybe you don't know what you're up against. I know exactly what I'm up against. Vardman is one of the most ruthless men in the country. He'll kill your son, then he'll kill me. I'm going to try to keep both of you alive. The way through the gully looks clear. I don't expect you to make a fight for it. All the figures come out the front door and make the trade him for Jill. Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Ball, you stay inside this house and keep away from the windows. He won't get his son back, not without trading for him. He's got to try. You find that he can't, then he'll trade me for his son. Or he'll get killed. The environment won't need a trade. They look him right in after me. Charles, please. I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to stay here and die. Let me go, Mr. Cartwright. It's my fault them being there, kind of. All right. I'll give a call, like a nest and jay. Count ten, and then open up. All right. Yeah. Be up about there. Let's go. You to ribbons. We know there's only three down there, boy. Oh, it's just no birdie.
until I'm dead, or he's dead. Charles, what are we going to do? I'm going to testify. If I get out of this alive, I'm going to testify against each and every one of them. They can keep their 50,000. I don't like getting shot at to make a man see the light.
I'm not going to say thank you. No lead. No words. What words can a man use to say, thank you for saving my life? Forget it. I can't. I can't even pay you. No. No, you can't even pay me. I don't know what to do. You tell them what you must tell them at the trial. I'll walk a straight line from here on in. That'll be pay enough and thanks enough. Would you like to do this man to man? No guns. Yeah. been around here for a long time, and I've heard some pretty tall tales where this one purely stops the clock. Tell me the truth, Sheriff. That's exactly the way it happened. Well, the judge will be here in a few days. You can try your story on him. Sheriff? What do you want, Quinn? Well, I uh, heard what happened to Leggett, so I thought I just better step up and tell you what I know. Like what? Well, it was bad blood between this one and Leggett. They had a big fight out near my corrals the day they started the drive for Sacramento. Oh, I heard about that fight and four or five more. Did you hear he said he was going to kill Leggett? Did you say that, boy? Yeah, yeah, I probably did. About the time he was knocking me down or I was knocking him down. We were a little bit riled up, Sheriff. All right, you said your piece, Quinn, so, uh... Why don't you go on back to buying cattle and leave the law work to me, all right? I'm just doing my duty, Sheriff. Thanks a lot, conscientious citizen. Sheriff? Yeah? Can I send a telegram? To who? Ben Cartwright in Sacramento. Yeah, I reckon you can if you can write it out and pay you for it. Thanks a lot. Why 
I would leg it for the knife on you. The leg and I were always fighting, you know that. Well, I know that, but fighting is one thing and murder is something else entirely. Yeah, I know. Well, why did he use the gun? Why did he throw away the gun? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to make the noise. That horse thief. Was he the only Indian around? He's the only one I saw. I know he's the only man who can prove I didn't kill Leggett. What did he look like? About my height, my weight, uh, long black hair, wore a blue shirt, sleeves were cut off, and a uh, beaded belt. How do you find a horse thief? I don't know. Easy to find a needle in a haystack. All we can do is start looking where Candy saw him last. Yeah, even if we find him, can he take his work? Hey, Pa, I got an idea. Yeah. I'll need some money. How much? $200. Your ideas are bold, but very expensive, Joseph. For Candy's sake and yours, I, I hope this is a good one. 50? 100? 20, 40, 60, 80, 200, right. Right. I've sold you Cartwrights a lot of horses, but I've never sold you one as good as this. Never for that kind of price either, Jack. $200 for that horse is highway robbery, and you know it. <laughs> you Cartwrights can afford it. I'll see you later. Thanks, Jack. Little brother, quit playing games with me. What do you want with this horse, anyhow? I'm going to use him for bait, huh? Bait? Bait. I've already gone over the facts of the case with the sheriff. You have? I realize Mr. Canaday would need a good lawyer, in which case he'd come to me. It saves time if I'm conversant with facts. They have a good case, circumstantial but strong. It could go either way. Do you think you can help them? I'll try. The fee is $500 in advance. You don't think the man's life is worth $500? Well, yes, I guess I do, of course, but... You're paying me to tip the scales of justice in your favor. Justice is not inexpensive. Squirrels turn around up there. No. Dat burn bugs, chiggers and skeers, and I got everything but mice. Ah, well, don't tell me your troubles. You know, if we can get a pout to come up and steal that that apple, who's ten to one, it won't be the right pout. Uh, we'll just turn them loose and wait for the right one. That's all. Yeah, but will the right pout come along before they hang Andy or after? Charlie boy. Charlie. Charlie boy. Yeah. Charlie boy. Come on, up you go. And a boy. You Charlie boy. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Now, you used to work for John Leggett, didn't you? No anymore, I don't. He's dead. Well, <laughs> I know. Uh, Charlie boy? I was wondering if you knew of anybody who might have a reason to kill old Leggett. Me. Leggett don't pay me my wages. But I didn't kill him. Besides, I scared a leggy. It's funny. 
Leggett was scared too. Mean as a scorpion. But he was scared. He owed somebody a lot of money. Drinking together one night. He told me if he don't pay up, he's gonna get killed. Who do you owe the money to? I don't know. That's when I fell asleep. Uh, no sign of anybody. Two days we haven't even seen an Indian. Yeah, we can't get lucky like Custer. It was a good idea, Joe. It just didn't work. We'll get back into Reno first thing in the morning for the trial. All right. sleep trying to get you. And ain't nothing makes me matter than losing all that sleep. Joe? Wake up, Joe. I think we got him. At least we got a fella that fits the description. And blue shirt, beaded bell. Fits the description, all right. What's your name? Oh, it's you play you. Well, I can say we come as friends. Yeah, I got a feeling he's not gonna believe that. Look, we need your help. How do you say we need your help? Come so to Paul. What do you say? That's how you say we need your help. Speaks English. I also speak Paiute, which makes me smarter than you. Well, if you're so smart, how'd you let us catch you? All right, horse. Now, we've been looking for you. Is that why you have been leaving that horse staked out? Yeah. How did you expect to find me while you were hiding under trees? Well, we found you. That's the important thing, ain't it? About a week ago, you tried to grab two horses. Uh, a friend of ours caught up with you, a fellow named Candy. You had a fight. You remember that? Why? Because during that fight, there was a shot. That shot killed a man. And that friend of ours is being held for murder. I remember. It happened as you say. All right, will you come with us to Reno and testify to that? No. I told you, you go to Reno and tell them. We can't do that. You're the witness. You have to testify. All right. Bring them here. I will tell them. We can't bring the court here. You're going to have to go there. If you don't, he'll hang. If I do go, they will hang me. No, they won't. Now, look, we guarantee it. We'll get you into town and out again. No. Well, they probably wouldn't take the word of a horse thief anyhow. I am a chief. You're a horse thief. I am a great horse thief. Brave men steal the horses of their enemies. When you steal a man's horse, you steal his pride. 
gives you honor. Where I come from, it gets you hung. But we can take you whether you want to go or not. Even if they will not believe a horse thief? Now they might believe a chief. Ah, oh, Joe, he ain't no chief. Chief wouldn't let himself get caught this easy. You did not catch me. I caught you. If I told him to cut your heart out, he would do it. If I told him to strip the flesh off your back inch by inch, he would do it. Do you know why? Because I am a chief. You're not a chief, you're a coward. Shall I show you? Oh, hell, by having him kill me? The Cheyenne let their women kill prisoners. Are you trying to prove you're as brave as a Cheyenne squaw? No, a chief is a man who looks for justice. He couldn't let an innocent man die. It'll be just one less white man for me to kill. It takes no courage to have someone else do your killing. You're a coward. You're afraid of the white man. Yawai <laughs> Mohe. I will go with you to Reno. But before this is over, you will eat your words. Because I will feed them to you on the point of this knife, one by one. about me like I'm some kind of horse. He speaks English. Why don't you tell me? Uh, who is he? Oh, that's my father. What is his name? Ben Carter. Can he speak Paiute? Oh, I, think I, I can, can speak for myself. I can too. So if you have any more questions, ask me. Um, sorry. Why not talking here to uh, uh... Jokova? <clears throat> well, I uh, go over to Mr. Scott. He's the lawyer I hired, and tell him I want a movie. I want to hear what Jokova has to say. Well, I'm, can we get something to eat first, Paul? I'm starving. Yeah, I'm kind of hungry myself. Is it Joe? Yeah, I could use a steak. Uh, Jokova? Mm. Yeah. What would you like to eat? You just name it, and we'll be happy to get it for you. Buffalo hump. Oh, I, I, I don't think that they'd have buffalo hump in the restaurant. Then I'll have boiled dog. You don't uh, eat what everybody else eats, huh? How about steak? That's cow. Yeah, but uh, it, it is a cow. It, you know, they might have some venison. Well, as a matter of fact, they do. I saw it on the menu. They have that venison. Venison. Fine. How do you want it fixed? Or an open fire made with dry buffalo chips. Oh, well, sure. Yes, that. Yeah, Hoss, uh, stop by at the jail on the way and uh, tell Canada the good news. Yeah. Well, uh, 
Yeah, I think uh, this would be a good room for you to be in. That way nobody can get in here without coming through here first. See? That way nobody will get to see you. I'll uh, call you as soon as the food gets up. Oh, brother. What's the matter? Well, do you know who that is? Hmm? The most wanted Indian in the territory. What? Well, there isn't a lawman around that doesn't want to get his hands on him. Oh, well, that's great. What do we do now? Try to figure out some way of keeping our only witness from being hanged. I was wondering, where'd you learn to speak English? From Pony Soldier. When I was small, I lived outside of the Fort Gates. Is that where you learned to hate the white man? You think because I steal their horses, I hate the white man? When you kill him. I have never killed one white man. Everybody thinks you have. Yes, and this is good. If they think I am a killer, they do not chase me when I steal their horses. Who's that? It's me, Paul. Fine, Walter Sloan. Good evening, Mr. Cartwright. Picked a most inconvenient time for consultation. Well, I didn't think this could wait. Trial is tomorrow. That hasn't slipped my mind, if that's what's worrying you. I would like to get back to my poker game. A man is on trial for his life, and that trial starts tomorrow morning. And I'm defending him. That is a terrible responsibility, Mr. Cartwright. I'm fully aware that I hold another man's life in my hands. In court tomorrow, I will do my very best. Well, Mr. Scott, I'm sure that you will do your very best. And uh, matter of fact, to ensure that, we have a witness for you, a, an eyewitness, a man who was with Candy when that shot was fired. Then he really is innocent. What do you think? It doesn't matter what I think. Innocence or guilt, it's for the jury to decide. All right. Let's see the witness. You're joking. He was with Candy when Leggett was killed. He is Jokova, isn't he? Yes. I'm sorry you went to all that trouble. We can't possibly use him. His appearance in court would prejudice the entire case. How? He's an Indian and a wanted man. You mean you, you're not going to use the only witness we have who can corroborate Candy's story? No. It would only confuse the court. They wouldn't know whether to hang the... Defendant or hang the witness. They might end up by hanging them both side by side. You're not going to use them? No. Well, then, I'm afraid we're going to have to get ourselves another lawyer. If you can find one. I'll see you at the trial anyway. I wouldn't miss this for the biggest poker game in Denver. Was the best lawyer in town. Well, I say good riddance. Let's get the second best. Well, he's also the second best and third and worst. He's the only lawyer in Reno. I guess that leaves it up to us and, and Jokova. Jokova, just tell me exactly what happened out there so I'll know what to say in court. 
two white men were fighting while I stole their horses. Oh, I, I don't think you'd better say anything about stealing horses in court. It is the truth. Yes, I know it. No? No, you tell it just the way it happened. Somebody said they seen your two boys here sneaking the engine up the back way. Oh? Well, it looked a whole lot like Joker. Well, I wonder who'd say a thing like that. I don't know, but as long as I'm here, I might as well take a look around. What's in there? Here. There's something in there, Mr. Cartwright, you don't want me to see? Of course not. Well, you you won't mind if I take a look at myself, then, will you? S.E.J., you still down there? Right where you left me. Ain't nobody come out of your window? Nothing's moved since you went up them stairs. before it's time for you to appear in court. And when it is time, I'll have the boys come and get you. All right? You need me. Thanks. Who's the judge? Judge Butler. He's the hanging judge. Thanks. One of my lucky days. Take your hats off! Stand up! Sit down. What have you got? Huh? 
Hello, Ben. Morning, Your Honor. What are you doing here? Well, I'm uh, acting as counsel for the defense of Mr. Kennedy. Come here a minute. You're no lawyer, Ben. Well, I know. What makes you think you can handle the defense of a man who's on trial for his life? Well, somebody's got to do it. Oh. Can't get a lawyer to take the case, huh? All right. There's something you ought to know that's very important. If murder's proved, it's a hanging offense. I know that. Now, let's get on with it. Hiram, uh, Mr. Prosecutor, call your witnesses. I call Joe Cartwright. your hand on the Bible. You swear to tell the truth? Yeah. Sit down. Mr. Cartwright, did you ever see the uh, defendant and the murdered man in a fight? Yeah, I guess I did. How often? Uh, two or three times, I guess. Maybe four? Yeah, maybe. Enough to know they really hated each other, right? I'm waiting for your answer, Mr. Cartwright. Candy didn't kill him. What were they usually fighting about? Oh, anything and everything. It didn't take much of a reason and never was very serious. Do you think either of them took the threat seriously? Well, Leggett said that Candy was a hard case and meant to kill him. Now, in your opinion, why would the murderer bring the body of his victim back to town? Hmm. Throw suspicion off himself and... Maybe onto the Indians. But could it have been the Indians? Well, he still had his scalp. I don't think it was the Indians. Your witness, Mr. Cartwright? No questions. That's all, Sheriff. Thank you. That's my case, Judge. Ben? Right, let's go get Joker. Don't bring him in. Don't let anybody see him until I call for him. I have to tell you, he's got a pretty good case. You sure you can handle the defense? Well, sir, that depends on you and Hiram. his safety if he'd come in here and testify. Well, I'd kind of like to hear what this Joker has to say. Hiram? I don't know, Judge. What is it you don't know, Hiram? Well, in the first place, he's a savage. Yes, oh. His swearing on the Bible wouldn't mean a thing. Oh, come on. You don't have to believe in the Bible to be able to tell the truth. But there's more to it than that. Get off your high horse, Hiram. Let's see what this man has got to say. It's your courtroom. You can go. Now, Ben Cartwright is about to call a witness. You may not like this witness, but he's here to see justice done. And if anyone so much as lays a hand on him, he's going to have me to deal with and the devil to pay. Ben, call your witness. Well, Your Honor, uh, 
My, my, my boys have just gone out to, uh, to get them, and I'm sure they'll be here in, in just a moment. You've got 30 seconds. Delaying things, Cartwright. Your Honor, uh, I would like to ask for a temporary recess and uh, until we until we can find our witness. I am here, Mr. Cartwright. Please tell the court your name. Jokova. And you are a member of the Paiute Nation? I am a chief. Now, chief Jokova, do you know what this trial is about? Yes. Now, would you please tell the court where you were and what you were doing the day Leggett was killed? I was hiding in the woods. I saw two men coming. One was the man who was killed. The other was this one. They left their horses and they climbed to a high point to look around. The one who was killed attacked this one with a knife. While they were fighting, I ran out to steal their horses. Shut up! <clears throat> I see. And then? I was riding away with their horses when this one jumped from uh, a bank and knocked me from the saddle. While we were fighting, there was a shot. I thought more white men were coming, so I rode away and hid. I saw this one run back to the other man. The other man was already dead. Thank you, Chief Joker. Your witness. Why did you hide when you saw the two riders approaching? Because I was going to steal their horses and their guns. Shut up! Did you intend to kill him? Only if I had to. Judge, you can't take the word of a man like this. He just confessed to being a horse thief and a would-be murderer. Why, you don't believe all the things he said about himself, do you? I certainly do. Well, if they're true, the rest is true. And Mr. Canada is innocent. Sit down, Hiram. Was Leggett killed by an Indian? No. If it had been one of my Indians, he would have bragged about it. Did you see anything else? This. It was in the grass where the two white men were fighting.
Why didn't you mention this before? Nobody asked me. Mr. Kennedy? You own a gold toothpick? <laughs> me? I never owned a gold toothpick. I don't think I've ever seen a two or three before. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Joe, Joe, who was it? Quinn! Yeah, it's Quinn. Mr. Quinn, if you've got a gold toothpick, let's see it. I, uh... Well, I, uh... I guess I left it at home. Your Honor? I'd like to ask another question. Go right ahead. Jokova, is there something that you haven't told us because nobody's asked it of you? Yes. What is it? After this man rode out with body, I saw another white man come out from hiding behind trees. I followed him to Reno. It was this man. That's a lie. And he rode an unshod Indian pony. Lies. Every word. No, 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 they're not lies. An unshod pony to make the killing look like the work of the Paiutes. No! You and Liggett were working together. No. Of course they were. That's why Liggett wanted to bring the herd back to Reno. To sell the beef to you for $12 a head. Instead of the 18, we could get in Sacramento. Of course. That's what Charlie Boy was talking about. He said that Liggett owed somebody a lot of money. They was afraid the fellow was going to kill him. It was you that killed him, wasn't it? No. I think you're lying. Put that man in jail, Crawley. Well, George, what about uh, Jokova? Well, if it hadn't been for Jokova, we might have hanged an innocent man. Now, the rest of you people, sit down. This court is still in session. You take that man over and lock him up, Crawley. Yes, sir. Mr. Quinn, you're going to need a good lawyer. I'll go with you. Now, the rest of us are going to sit here for 30 minutes while I review this case. Ben, I don't think I'm going to need you or your witness anymore. Thank you, Your Honor. Jokeba, let's go. Ready, Paul. Oh, good. We're almost ready, too. Okay, man. Hold it. Don't nobody move now. I don't want nobody to get hurt. All I want is out that Indian. Now, you just put your guns on the bedspread there, real nice and neat like. Come on. All right, if you'll just fold it up in a nice little bun for me. Judge promised you a immunity. I don't care what the judge said. under the bed, Sheriff, where I was before. Come in. All of you. You called me a coward. Now you will eat your words. You're a brave man. And a chief. You're also a thief. A great thief. A big thief, anyway. You will go with me. As I told you, I have killed many white men. One more will make no difference. Do not follow me. Oh, no. 
No. He means it. He'll kill Joseph. Mustn't follow him. Yeah, take the horse. He's yours. Go on. I told you he's yours. What are you waiting for? If I rode into my village on this horse now, my people would know you gave him to me. What's wrong with that? I do not accept gifts from my enemies. Or from your friends? You know something? You feel mighty good to get back to that ranch. For a while there, I thought maybe I wasn't going to make it. Hmm. Paul? Joe, Candy? Hey, Jokova! Jokova. I didn't get a chance to thank you. It is not easy to be friends with your enemy. Now, before I steal from a white man, I will have to look into his face to see that I am not stealing from a friend. Take care. Chief. Knowing him. He's a pretty decent sort of fellow, wasn't he? Yeah. Sure did a lot for me. Mm. Yeah. Well, in a way, I'm sorry I didn't take that horse. Yeah. Strange man. But in his own way, a very honest man. Yeah. That son of a gun stole the horse? Well, as I said, in his own way, a very honest man. <laughs>